As the coronavirus pandemic continues, thousands of people are packed right now inside of a closed arena. They are waiting to hear from President Trump. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Steve Price. And I'm Alicia Summers. We begin in Tulsa, Oklahoma tonight. This is a live look inside the Bank of Oklahoma Center where the president will be at the podium any minute now. Vice President Mike Pence just finished speaking. Now this is his first rally since the pandemic hit, sparking controversy. Omar Villafranca has more on the buildup to tonight's event. The president's first rally since March comes as coronavirus cases are spiking in Oklahoma and many states across the U.S. Uh, no intentions on wearing masks. Uh, we're, we're healthy individuals. We hope everyone here is only coming here if they assume the risk of being out here today. I have hand sanitizer on me. We have masks for whenever we get, you know, less, you know, six feet away. President Trump's campaign announced Saturday that six staff members helping set up for the rally have tested positive for the virus. Masks are not required at the indoor or outdoor rally venues, but temperature checks are being conducted and hand sanitizer provided. The president spoke on the South Lawn as he departed the White House for Tulsa. The event in Oklahoma is unbelievable. The crowds are unbelievable. They haven't seen anything like it. The president is looking to the rally for momentum from court supporters. He uh, loves to unite people. I hope it's a message of unity today. The White House has faced days of unrest and protests following the death of George Floyd, two major Supreme Court defeats, and the release next week of former National Security Advisor John Bolton's White House tell-all memoir. A federal judge Saturday denied the administration's request to block the book. The Trump campaign pushed the Tulsa rally to Saturday night after an outcry when it was first set for Juneteenth, the annual celebration marking the end of slavery. Omar Villafranca, CBS News, Tulsa, Oklahoma. The choice of Tulsa itself was controversial. Nearly a century after a white mob massacred hundreds of African-American residents, including burning a thriving neighborhood to the ground. Almost a thousand skateboarders rolled through the streets of downtown today, calling to defund police and remember the names of those who died in police custody. The goal of the protest was to call for taking money away from police departments and instead investing more money into communities, as well as remembering all the lives that died in police-related incidents. The skaters finished the protest at Memorial Park for a skate session. Hundreds gathered across the county for the first ever We Pray San Diego event. Faith leaders and community members met at 11 different outdoor locations from Oceanside to Chula Vista. The goal of the event was to pray for our city and those impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic and racial injustice. News 8's Heather Hope was there and has this story. Packed in prayer right on the lawn in front of Waterfront Park, hundreds of church members, pastors, and county officials all alike united to pray for the pandemic and for racial unity. But you may not hear anything. That's because through the website We Pray San Diego, people can hear a self-guided prayer as they're out here praying. Lord, I pray for everyone listening to this right now and everyone around the county who's praying. Asking for help with heads bowed and eyes closed, San Diegans called out to God. They're down, so much anxiety and depression, but this is all about the hope and the unity coming together and knowing that there is hope. Scattered on yoga mats with beach towels at Waterfront Park downtown for the first We Pray San Diego event, bringing over 100 local churches and many more of their church members together in prayer for all things COVID-19 and for racial injustice. It's the only answer to this problem. It's the only the answer only to answer. any of our problems. Singing Amazing Grace. It was grace, my fears. We are praying that God would do what we can't do to bring us together. Praying at 11 different locations across San Diego County. Begin to pray now that God would repair and restore. From the southeast at Euclid and Imperial Avenue to East County and Santee at Mass Boulevard in Carlton Hills. Sprawled along the sidewalk in front of Pathways Community Church, praying in front of businesses, some sitting in chairs socially distanced. United in spirit, united in love, and united in our hope in you. San Diego City Council Member Monica Montgomery was there. We have a lot of work to do, y'all. We have a lot of work to do. The community stretched out on the street, down on their knees with hands raised high. Some prayed out loud. Let us be the ones that are out here doing your will and your work, Father. Others read from the Bible. For God has not given us a spirit of fear. Some came in song. 
The prayer requests were long. We need healing, we need unity, we need peace, the restoration of businesses, people's finances. Crowds came as churches are still closed. This is actually the first time we've gone anywhere church, for church. Yeah. We're used to church online right now. We believe that through prayer today, God is dispatching heaven, dispatching angels, bringing unity to a city that feels nothing but divided. We believe that this will be a catalyst for the rest of our country, hopefully the world, that there is unity in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And this countywide prayer event is a first of its kind on this large scale. But pastors at Rock Church say it won't be the last one as they feel much prayer and community support is needed during this pandemic. Stephen Alicia. Heather, thank you. Now over by the Air and Space Museum in Balboa Park today, groups gathered to honor Juneteenth, which memorializes the end of slavery more than 150 years ago. Hundreds of supporters marched through Balboa Park. Event organizers say the message was, we stand united, we demand change. Protesters ended the rally at President's Way Lawn, honoring the Juneteenth anniversary and also calling to abolish ICE. Animal lovers rejoice. The San Diego Zoo and Safari Park are now open to the general public. But before you head out to see the new Pygmy Hippo or visit the Africa Rocks exhibit, there are a few extra safety protocols that you need to know about. Look at that guy there. Didn't you? I miss those guys. Aww. News Ace Tim Blodgett has the details. The San Diego Zoo is back open. What's new? What's changed? And what have these guys been doing for the last three months? Yeah. It's a beautiful day at the zoo. It wasn't just the visitors that were excited about the reopening of the San Diego Zoo. Yeah, it's been interesting to watch the animals during our closure. Uh, the orangutans have been extremely interested in, in our staff members when they would come by their, their habitat. I think some of the, uh, the animals enjoy watching our guests just as much as we appreciate seeing them. Two hours before it opened, guests started lining up outside the zoo, hoping to be the first in line to get a glimpse of the exotic animals they've missed so much. Tigers. I really like the pandas. Monkeys. He has the same color hair. <laughs> That's what I like about them, too. There's always one meerkat that stands guard. He's a sentry. And like the meerkat, who is always on guard, zoo staff are on the lookout for keeping guests safe. So we had those employees start coming back last week for training, uh, really extensive training on how to work with this, this new uh, normal, as we call it, within this COVID environment. Dwight Scott is the director of the San Diego Zoo. He says so far guests have been doing a good job respecting the rules they've put in place for keeping people safe. Our guests have been just absolutely fantastic. I mean, you'll see this morning guests coming in. Everyone will have a facial covering on and they're, they're practicing social distancing. Everyone's been extremely responsible. Extra hand washing stations, increased signage to remind people to social distance, and decreased capacity are the ways that the zoo and the safari park are trying to keep people safe. They have even gone so far as to place a barrier in front of this baboon enclosure as there is some evidence that primates might be at risk for COVID-19. Scott says that even during the lockdown, the animals have always been their top priority. Our animal care teams, we've had 100% coverage from day one. You know, our commitment to our animals is, a, is a significant. It's a responsibility that we have to take great care of the animals. So whether you're human or primate, the San Diego Zoo is doing its very best to look out for you. Very clean, very well organized. I think they're doing a fabulous job. We missed you all so much. Great to see you. And before you come down to the zoo, staff urges you to check the website to make sure that there are no restrictions on the exhibits you might want to visit and that they're not at capacity so they can let you in. At the San Diego Zoo, Tim Blodgett, News 8. Thanks, Tim. Now some fun. Also returned to Legoland California Resort in Carlsbad today. Uh, the Sea Life Aquarium, filled with 4,000 sea animals, reopened. There are new safety protocols and tickets must be purchased in advance online to reserve a date and time. Sea Life Aquarium is the first attraction to reopen at the resort. Legoland Park is scheduled to reopen July 1st, pending state approval. Well, it started off cloudy and drizzly in parts of the county, but it burned off for a beautiful afternoon today. So what can families expect for their Father's Day plans? Let's check in with meteorologist Sean Stiles. He joins us now with a first look at your microclimate forecast. And you know who loved today, Sean? 
the kite surfers, man, they were going oh. at it today. Yeah, there was plenty of wind out there along the coastline, and you mentioned what can we expect for Dad's Day? Well, how about a 71 coastal? We'll see partial clearing at the beaches. Once you get off the beaches and move inland a little bit, we'll see partly to mostly sunny skies by the afternoon. And if you're in the inland microclimates, the foothills or the mountains, plenty of sunshine. Your temperatures there, though, will be in the low 80s. Now, those clouds will be around in the morning and in the evening, and your sunset will be at 759. Here's a look at our time lapse uh, as we see the marine layer well offshore, but plenty of clear skies uh, towards the East County. Here's a look at that time lapse one more time. You can see how far inland the marine layer made it. It was pretty deep and made its way all the way into the foothills, but eventually burning off by the noon hour. So for tomorrow, 71. 71 and 74 along the coastline. The same kind of weather pattern, late night, early morning clouds giving way to mostly sunny skies. More sunshine inland as we get into the mid and early part of the work week. Expect those temperatures to stay in the low 80s. We'll have your eight day microclimate forecast in just a bit. Oh, looks great, Sean. Thank you. We'll see you then. Today in Lemon Grove, free food and personal protective equipment for hundreds of families, all in honor of Father's Day. A congressional candidate, Sarah Jacobs, joined the effort. She says the black community is suffering from two pandemics at once. We know that COVID-19 is affecting our communities of color and our black communities here in San Diego uh, worse. And we're also seeing even here in San Diego, we have uh, this racism, we have anti-blackness. And so we need to stand up all of us together. The drive was organized by a coalition of community groups, including the San Diego Hip Hop Health and Wellness Festival, Young Black and in Business, the House of Restoration and Project Aware.